Hey YouTube, it's Herb Vargas here, and I thought I'd show you some of the new features for RetroPie 4.0. And a lot has changed with it, particularly with the setup script, so it can be a bit confusing um, with the layout, but I'm going to show you. We'll boot up into it, and I'll show you some of the new features we've added. So we will boot up. And I think the first thing you'll notice is we've got a fancy new splash screen. Do you see this new splash screen uh, that Rukovic made? It looks real nice. It matches the carbon theme a lot better than the last one did. And um, as you'll notice, it boots right into the RetroPie menu. And that's all that's there. So this image is a bit more slimmed down than the others. And all the emulators are still installed, but you will need to add ROMs to the respective folders before they'll show up, as usual. So if we go into the RetroPie menu and go into the RetroPie setup script, I'll show you some of the things that have changed. And if you're updating from RetroPie 3.8 or earlier, you're going to want to update your setup script first to get these new changes on the menu. And you'll see that there's some built-in information showing you a little bit more extra about each menu option so at the bottom there you can see the text so if you're confused about which one um, which ones are for what it gives you a little bit more extra info uh, so that if you're updating from RetroPy 3.8 earlier you're going to want to go into the manage packages section first and then you're going to want to do a quick install and then you'll want to update all your installed packages so just to lay it out for you there are the five sections the core main optional driver and experimental packages so when you do a quick install, it will install all of the core packages and all of the main packages. And that's essentially what we ship with with the RetroPie SD image. And the core packages are all of the stuff that's essential for RetroPie to function. So you've got RetroArch, which is for most of the emulators, uh, Emulation Station, which is the front ends, uh, RetroPie Menu, which is that menu we booted into, and then the Run Command Menu, which is uh, the script that's launched every time you launch a game or open up an emulator and so you you can update these but I wouldn't recommend removing them because the RetroPie needs them to function and then the main packages are just the typical main emulators so these are what are installed on the default 4.0 image and then uh, you've got optional packages which is where Kodi now is so if you want to know where Kodi is this is where you install it um, so you can install the optional packages if you want and then if you're looking to configure your controllers like Xbox 360 or the PS3 controller that's under the driver menu uh, so you can see the Xbox drivers there or the PS3 controller and then of course you've got experimental packages and then there's some new things we've added as well within this menu where you notice you can actually remove packages you don't want so let's say maybe you didn't want PyFBA on there you can uh, remove it um, another thing too is we've incorporated the wiki or at least the most important parts of the wiki into this menu as well so if you're not sure what uh, ROM extensions you need or what BIOS you need or where to put your ROMs it will give you information on that so if you go into package help for each uh, system you'll see that for PyFBA it needs a .zip extension and there's three different places you can put it and then uh, it will need the Neo Geo's BIOS um, as well and then if there's any other extra information specific to that emulator that will be included in here as well so if you for some reason aren't able to go to the wiki uh, this stuff is included now so that should hopefully give you a little bit more information that might be a little bit more immediate than needing to go to a separate web page um, so that's essentially uh, the layout of the new menu and we've also added a few more features so uh, in terms of experimental packages, we've added a few obscure ones from the 80s, so like the Auric, uh, the TRS-80, which is different than the Coco um, that we had earlier from x -Raw. This is a different emulator. And then the TI-99, or 4A, and then the Dinosaur standalone Libretro game. So those are the four new experimental packages we've added. And then in terms of features, we've also added uh, under the setup tools and auto start settings, after you've installed coding, Kodi, 
you can uh, boot to Kodi and then when you exit Kodi it will go back into Emulation Station. So you can do that there if you like Kodi more than playing games, which sometimes I do. And then also we've made a few improvements to the splash screen repository or the module for it. And we made a few earlier as well, but we've just included a couple others. So if you want the default splash screen that's carbon based, you just want to update the RegPy splash screens first and then select use default splash screen and that should give you the new default. But also uh, we've slimmed down the RegPy splash screen repository for just the default ones we've shipped with the SD image. So the one from 2013, 14, 15, um, there's those. And then the RetroPy Extra is all of the user-created splash screens from the last three or four years. So all of the really cool ones that Rukovic and Little, Bit, Little Bud have done uh, for all of the title screens, yeah, those are all in there. Um, so those are really cool. So if you want extra splash screens um, to choose from, you can do that. And then, of course, we've got ra randomizer enabled. You can enable that. That will remind, randomize them. And then there's a few other things. And, of course, uh, this works with videos as well. So you can... Uh, also add video splash screens. And so I think that's basically all the things we've added um, for the last one. We've also done a few bug fixes. There might be a few kernel issues with the Xbox 360 that some people reported. I still need to look into that. Um, but yeah, so there's so obviously a few things that are always in development and there's some things that are outside of our control like kernel issues, um, but we try and log issues upstream where we can to fix those. Um, but I hope you really like the new menu changes and uh, hopefully it makes it simpler and gives you a little bit more control over what you want in your system and what you don't want. Um, and hopefully it'll make updating a lot easier. In the future when you're doing updates, you should just be able to update all your installed packages and you should just be good to go um, and without needing to go through all the hoops for all that. This hopefully shouldn't change too much anymore in the future um, and we'll just be able to have it be more modular and add the things that we need and remove the things we need uh, in a much simpler way. So I hope you enjoy it and then we look forward to continuing to develop uh, new features um, in the future. But yeah, so enjoy.